Well, hello on this Tuesday, and hope that this week has gone well for you so far. And uh, with it being Tuesday, I want to look at the Psalms together. If you want to turn there with me, open your Bibles with me to the book of Psalms, and we're going to be looking at Psalm 16 today. Um, I'm going to pick up uh, where we left off, and so I'm going to look at another uh, Psalm of David here in Psalm 16, and then find a very significant prophecy made within this psalm. Uh, first, we'll talk about how this psalm, of course, uh, reflects on David's life, uh, but then show uh, how the Holy Spirit worked through David uh, to give even a uh, greater message there that would later be fulfilled by Jesus. Let's read Psalm 16 together. Let's look at it here in verse 1. When it says, as David writes this psalm, Preserve me, O God, for in you I will put my trust, or for in you I put my trust. He's asking for God to preserve him, or another way to say that is to watch over, uh, watch over me, um, help me, take care of me, um, all along those lines. And then he says, O my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. So now David sort of speaks in, you know, in himself, to himself, of his own soul, saying, you know, that I've said that, you know, the Lord is my Lord and that, you know, my goodness is nothing apart from God. As for the saints, verse 3, who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. Here what David begins declaring about God is that God is his God, his Lord, his everything. Um, David is nothing without the Lord. And, you know, David is not, you know, a good and righteous person because of himself. He is a uh, good and righteous person. Any goodness within David is credited to the goodness of the Lord. Um, and really all the Lord's people, all the saints' people, is David, or all the Lord's saints is uh, David says in verse 3 that he takes delight in the people of God and the saints of God on the earth. The excellent ones, he calls them, those living in righteousness. That is where the joy of the Lord is found within his people who love him, who obey him, who, who in faith live for him each and every day. And David is saying, Lord, you are my everything, which God is the only one that can preserve us, watch over us, provide salvation. And so then verse four, he says, their sorrows shall be multiplied who hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer nor take up their names on my lips. Now, David starts talking about those who are doing evil. Um, those who are sinning, those who are going after other gods and idolatry, even offering uh, drink offerings of blood. David says, no, I'm, I'm not going to have anything to do with that because David is going to be faithful to the Lord. And David knows the Lord will be faithful to him if he is faithful to the Lord. And then verse 5, he says again, O Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. Praising God for his blessings, for caring for David. He goes on to say, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be moved. David knows the Lord is his help. The Lord is his true help, his only help. The Lord is the one who has blessed him. The Lord is the one who has guided him and led him and given him an, a great inheritance. And not just in this life. Yes, the Lord did bless David uh, richly while David was on this earth. But there's a greater inheritance, an eternal inheritance, an eternal hope in the Lord. And what God can do and the promises and the covenant that God has made with his people. And David says, I will bless the Lord. Um, I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. He is my guide. The Lord is my everything. I need the Lord more than anything on this earth. 
And that was David's focus in this. And then verse 9, he goes on to say, after saying that of the Lord's counsel and guidance and instruction and the Lord being with him and he will never be moved, he says, verse 9, therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope, he says, for you will not leave my soul in Sheol or some versions, um, you know, say Hades or really uh, the idea is where the dead are, uh, the, the realm of the dead. Uh, you will not leave me in Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. Um, you will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. David, again, speaking of, of the joy of the Lord, of the Lord's protection and guidance here, and his heart is glad, his glory rejoices. He says, my flesh will also rest in hope. You will not leave my soul in Sheol. You will not allow your Holy One to see corruption. Uh, you will show me the path of life, the path of life. The presence of the Lord is full, is the fullness of joy. And at the right hand of the Lord, David says, are pleasures forever. What David writes about here is the goodness of knowing God and having a relationship with God, of living for God and what God blesses us with. And above all, the spiritual blessings and the hope beyond this life, beyond this world. And David speaks to that effect here in the joy and the hope of the faithful and uh, that God would save, God would bless, God would give eternal life. And so David reminds us to set God before us and that God is our guide. He will watch over us and he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. He will be with us if we will follow. He will lead. He will guide. And he will bless us beyond the, the blessings of, of this world. Now, what's special about this psalm, as we come to find out later in the New Testament, um, is that uh, David, in part of this, um, was actually prophesying about what was going to happen for Jesus. And it is this part um, in verses 9 um, and 10 um, about not leaving my soul in Sheol, you would not allow your Holy One to see corruption. Now, in a, a figurative way, or it, I mean, it could have applied at least to David and the hope that he had of, you know, life to come, but it wouldn't be the case for David uh, physically. Um, and really what David was talking about here was prophesying about the resurrection of Jesus. As we later find out, as Peter says in Acts chapter 2, if you look there, I'll remember that in Acts chapter 2, when uh, Peter was preaching the gospel to the multitudes there, he he quotes from this psalm. He quotes David um, and says, through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, that this was talking about the resurrection of Jesus, that Jesus was raised from the dead. His soul was not left in Hades. His, uh, his body, his physical body did not see corruption, the corruption, the process of of death that comes about over a period of time. Jesus was raised from the dead. Paul says the same thing in Acts chapter 13. In one of the sermons, the lessons, the times he was speaking to the people, um, he references, he quotes this psalm about the resurrection of Jesus. And so we find that David, the Holy Spirit through David, even through this psalm as David is recounting the, the blessings and joy of God in his own life, he is at the same time prophesying of what is going to come many, 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 many years later when the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God comes and will be raised from the dead, which gives us all hope of one day being raised from the dead just like him. And that is the joy, that is the blessing, that is the, the spiritual blessings that are found in Jesus, of what Jesus has done for us in dying on the cross, being raised from the dead, as we now have those spiritual blessings of hope and life and joy. God will guide us and lead us, and in the end, bring us home to Him in heaven. If we are faithful to Him, we live for Him, and we, we give Him our, our all, our life, our heart. And we obey his commandments. God is good. 
God is merciful. God is loving. And as David know, or David says here, David knew well of what it is to make the Lord your all, to set the Lord before you always. That needs to be our focus. As Jesus would similar, similarly say, uh, to seek first the kingdom of God. Put God first in all that you do in all your life. Live for the Lord because there will be blessings not only in this life, but above all, spiritual blessings of eternal life in Christ, in the very presence of God. Thanks be to God for that. Thanks be to Jesus. Thanks be to Jesus for his sacrifice and resurrection. Thanks be to the Holy Spirit working through David to provide us with this song. Think about it some more. Think about the hope. Think about the joy of the Lord. Take care. God bless.